um, the title of the exhibit is Walt Disney's first superstar Mickey Mouse. And this is a, phil a philatelic exhibit in the display category. Um, display exhibits here, as I mentioned, are permitted uh, to contain philatelic as well as other ephemera items. I don't know if you're familiar with the term ephemera, which usually refers to other paper, paper items, original art, postcards, photographs, advertising, any other paper item that might contain the image of your topic. This display category is fairly new exhibiting area and is, and is seeming to develop some interest, although not a traditional section for philatelic exhibits. This is a, um, you know, more an all inclusive exhibit with different types of memorabilia. Philatelic exhibitions are generally divided into the following sections. There are more than this, but these are the ones that I've chosen to, uh, to list. Traditional, mostly postage stamps. Postal history, US and foreign covers. Thematic topical, stamps for a given subject. It can be anything, cats, pumpkins, whatever topic you would choose. But in thematic and topical, ex topical exhibits, everything has to be philatelic. No ephemera items at all. Illustrated mail, first day covers. Revenue, stamps used to collect the tax. Display division, as we mentioned, there are the categories. Aerophilately. Uh, which is airmail, uh, Cinderella division, which Cinderella's are commemorative or advertising labels, not stamps, but they are advertising um, uh, labels, postcards, youth, the youth category, 18 and under, miscellaneous, and then there are also non-competitive uh, exhibits that are allowed in most shows. Um, and I, I'm going to give you a chance for questions at the end. Anything you'd like to ask about as I'm going through this, please interrupt, and then we can talk about that. Um, five, five different knowledges are necessary for successful exhibiting in the display category. And this came from uh, some great uh, advice and counsel to me from philatelic judge Ed Andrews. Philatelic knowledge, that is condition, relevance of stamps to the topic, rates on covers, et cetera more traditional uh, categories for philatelic exhibiting. Display knowledge, layout, formatting issues. Uh, it, it, when you try to lay out these larger pieces sometimes, that's why I use large panels, not just eight and a half by 11 pages. They're like 23 and a half by 17 and a half and I get four panels to a frame. And then it gives me more uh, ability to lay things out in what I think is a more engaging or interesting way. Thematic knowledge, specifics, what an item is and its time period and how it relates to your topic. Is this an advertising piece? Do you know where it came from? From a magazine in the 30s, 40s, whatever, since you identify what, what the, the item is. Deltiological knowledge, uh, postcard specifics, number of postcards in a set or series, finishes, a rate if mailed, et cetera. And then finally, story knowledge. The goal with it in a display exhibit is to weave a cogent and cohesive narrative with the exhibited elements. You're telling a story. Uh, usually a story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, a, uh, a term that has been uh, uh, coming more and more into prominence at, in, uh, in display exhibiting is the word epilogue. Do you have a final conclusion, conclusion to the story? Is that, is that an end or an ending? So again, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, my exhibit is divided into three, into three sections, three topics. Uh, they are Mickey as every man. You'll see some examples of that as, a, as we go along with the images. Uh, in the beginning, before uh, the Disney licensing machine really got going, uh, Mickey was shown doing all sorts of things as he had on, in, on the screen. Oh, and some of the images that did uh, had been drinking or smoking or womanizing. Uh, after the Disney licensing machine got going, of course, this was no, no more of that. Uh, Mickey had to be on model that is shown uh, as the Disney studio preferred him to be shown and doing things of which the Disney studio would approve drinking, especially Walt himself, drinking, smoking, not included among those. That, that's my first category. That was in the early years. Mickey was created in 1928 when he appeared in the, the film short of Steamboat Willie. 
uh, in November of 1928. And after that, he became an instant star. And uh, artists all over the world began uh, drawing him, uh, again, not on model, according to what the Disney studio thought, and again, doing things that uh, any individual might do, but uh, not always the most savory in terms of uh, Disney's uh, sense of what he should be doing. Second category is Mickey as cultural icon. Mickey took the 30s by storm. Uh, he was everywhere. And through the, uh, the merchandising of a guy named Kay Kamen, who got the, uh, the license with Disney for, ex um, uh, he was the only one able to represent Mickey. And he, Mickey, he, he, Kay Kamen did all sorts of work at all different industries, getting uh, Mickey to advertise all sorts of items. Mickey during the depression was credited with saving at least two industries, the Ingersoll Watch Company and the Lionel Train Company. They, of course, along with many businesses had difficulties during the, uh, the depression in the thirties. And Mickey with, through his advertising was credited in saving those two businesses during the thirties. And then the third category, Mickey as Walt Disney Studio slash corporate uh, symbol. Um, that is going to be the, uh, um, uh, the, the uh, uh, topic of my third book on the exhibit, uh, which I have uh, completed, but we were trying to get it published now. But uh, all three of these are, uh, are included in, uh, in, my, uh, in my exhibit. I'm not going to show you every item, but we'll give you some representative items here uh, from these three categories to give you an idea of what a, what a display exhibit is all about in terms of philatelic and other ephemera items. Here is an early cover that uh, um, whether, whether this was uh, done back in 1928, this is the first day cover for that, uh, that aeronautic stamp. But uh, when, I, when I saw this uh, again years ago at a stamp show, uh, this Mickey uh, as the cachet hand drawn, pretty well done by a cartoonist. I'm just saying it isn't signed but it almost looks like a Disney cartoon. And uh, um, Mickey in his uh, uh, first, first short film, which became the third one that was released called Plain Crazy, he was really uh, uh, an iteration of uh, um, Lindbergh as he flew across the Atlantic in 1927 and then flew the mail, uh, Charles did uh, for many years after that. And notice on the tail, this says Mickey Mail. So Mickey is really uh, taking the place of Lindbergh here, flying the mail, uh, which, uh, which, which, which was occurring around 1927 to 1928 uh, when this cover was, was produced. So whether this cover, this, uh, this cachet was hand drawn back in, in the period, no one can know, but it's a, it's a great cartoon image of Mickey, although not on model here, according to the Disney studio, but this is just the concept of the artist who drew this, who drew this cartoon. Mickey, a, a French postcard, again, Mickey as Lindbergh uh, flying the plane. Uh, here is a Spanish uh, comic, uh, little comic book, small comic book from one of Mickey's shorts, the, the male pilot, uh, 1933, but here he is again. But Mickey was often seen flying planes and doing daring stunts in the 30s, uh, and this was this was one of them. Here is an original um, uh, drawing by uh, one of uh, Disney's chief nine old men, which was which was original group of nine animators in 1928 uh, for this 1933 film, uh, The Mail Pilot. And this, this sketch uh, was on display uh, at the Smithsonian, uh, Air and Space, not the Air and Space Museum, but the National Postal Museum, when they were celebrating the 100 years of flight a few years ago. And somebody saw this in my exhibit and wanted it in the uh, Smithsonian exhibit. So I, I put it there, but now it, now it is back. But that's an original drawing by Les Clark, uh, one of Disney's nine old men for that, uh, that movie, Mail, The Mail Pilot. Here is one of the images that's incomplete. You can kind of see it at the bottom, uh, a little bit of the image. It, this is an advertising for early Hallmark cards. Hallmark was one of the original licensees for Disney. Uh, J.C. Hall, who began Hallmark, and Walt were good friends during Walt's Kansas City days. And Hallmark became one of the first licensees of, uh, 
uh, for the Disney company or for the Disney images. Down in the lower left, you can bar barely see that image of the card, but there is the card itself. It was on the advertising piece. And now here is uh, a get well, an early get well card uh, showing Mickey. And I'd love to collect these early cards because they are hand tinted. Can you see the white and the pink on this card are hand applied? That was only done in the very early years of Hallmark. Um, and I love to collect, I have a few of them, of these Disney cards that are hand tinted. Here's a, an early, early get well card. Here's another early get well card. We, I don't think this is hand tinted, but it's a die cut card. Um, again, signed by a person to someone that uh, said she wanted to uh, get well, Mickey pouring some uh, medication into a spoon. This is one of my favorite pieces. This would not have been allowed after the Disney licensing got going. Mickey and Minnie, you can tell, are not on model. These are early iterations of the two characters. But this is on a 1931 German brewery card. The Neumann Bry, it's down to the lower left there, brewery, and there are lyrics that go along with this to be sung in German. Mickey playing the accordion, Minnie the, the flute or, the, or a pipe anyway, and uh, uh, it was, the card was actually mailed on the back in 1931, so a very, very early card. Here is another postcard, British. And again, the, the, three, the, the three blind mice, Mickey, the three Mickeys, one smoking, one drinking. I guess there are two of them smoking and one drinking. Again, this image would not, this is Mickey is every man now. Not, this would not have been allowed these images after the licensing machine got going later on. Here is an early, in, from a 1932 magazine, The Delineator, uh, an early example of art that was done specifically for a magazine, but done in black and white showing Mickey and Minnie giving uh, gifts to children in Christmas 1932. Again, another British postcard. Mickey uh, in, in the 1930s was uh, perhaps more, more um, popular than even Charlie Chaplin or Douglas Fairbanks, some of the other luminaries in Hollywood. And uh, I'd like to accept no substitutes, Mickey is saying of himself, you know, choose me. <laughs> Here is a, uh, a, another original sketch of Mickey with the, uh, the Hollywood icons of the day. In the foreground is uh, Harpo Marx and other uh, William, Ro William G. Robinson and others around uh, surrounding Mickey um, showing how important Mickey was in the whole Hollywood scheme of things. But that's one of the original sketches for an early Mickey short. Here is Greta Garbo, it's a French postcard. Greta Garbo pining away when Mickey will have nothing to do with her. So again, a Harley Hollywood starlet, um, um, just uh, supposedly languishing over Mickey's in inattention. <laughs> this is an early, uh, from 1932, um, Mickey was so popular that uh, 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 fancy cancels were created of him. This one in, uh, in Mickey, Texas. Uh, this was sent to Dublin, Ohio. Uh, th this is one of about 20 registered covers that was done by W.G. Fontaine, the addressee there in Dublin, Ohio. Um, not sure if all 20 or 24 covers still exist. This is number 20, but you can see the images of Mickey that were allowed back then. Um, it came down shortly after this, about two or three years later, where the post office outlawed the use of fancy cancels. But these were allowed in the in the uh, early to mid thirties. Um, and and you maybe some of you collect fancy cancels or all sorts of of things. I've I've seen some with with uh, uh, pine trees. Uh, but and, the, and of course, there's been a whole study done of the um, um, the, the different early cancels that were um, were placed on. Uh, just read this in one of the philatelic magazines recently uh, on foreign mail out of New York. So this was done, these were allowed in the early to mid thirties. Here is a, a corner card with Mickey. Most of pigs is um, Mickey Mouse in, in Swedish. And this was sent back to Sweden. Uh, and the, I, I love this cover because this is Papa Iti from Papa Iti Tahiti. 
this was a world sailing tour that evidently was going in 1932, went from Sweden all the way down to the uh, uh, to Tahiti, and this was sent back from there. Um, kind of a kind of a you know this this cover traveled some distance. <laughs> Here is another commemorative cover of uh, um, the football classic, um, the uh, the Rose Bowl in 1934. Uh, Touchdown Mickey is the image from which Mickey is taken, uh, an early 1930s uh, Mickey short. Uh, but this was a cover sponsored by the uh, uh, Los Angeles Cover Club. You can see it down there at the bottom of the, uh, under Mickey there in Columbia Winds. H.E. Richmond, the addressee, was one of the, uh, the movers and shakers behind the LA Cover Club and uh, we produced this for the, uh, uh, for the Rose Bowl that year. This is a, um, um, a, a, a V-mail that was sent, uh, it's British, sent to Scotland when the, uh, this is a World War II item um, and the, the soldier, pretty good, pretty good at drawing Mickey and Minnie, a pretty, pretty good art here, uh, wishing his family at home a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Here is another uh, British postcard during the war, 1941. Mickey as a uh, um, uh, kind of a, a guard, a, a part of the flying squad, it says there on, the, uh, on his uh, motorcycle, but a public defender during the war protecting the public with his, uh, with his hat there. And, and perhaps delivering the mail with the cards and letters flying out of his pouch there. This is, this is a card sent from a, um, uh, a soldier overseas. You can see this is passed by the censor and sent back to Massachusetts. Um, I think with the APO, I think this was, this was in, he, the, uh, the officer or the uh, soldier was stationed in Northern Africa at the time. The, these to find uh, Disney or Mickey cards sent by, um, of military individuals, very tough to find. I'm lucky to have a few of these, but uh, um, by both, this is sent by a, probably a US soldier back to New York. Here is one sent from a, by a German soldier uh, during World War II. I love the fact that it has both the Feld post and the, uh, the uh, um, kind of censor mark on it. Um, of course, this, this is not during a very pleasant period of history uh, with, the, with the German war machine ravaging Europe, but it showed that even uh, uh, the German soldiers would use the, uh, the uh, Mickey cards to send back home. Here is a particularly um, sad one. This was sent by a German soldier, apparently uh, overseeing the uh, Jewish ghetto in Krakow, upper left Krakow. This is in Poland. Um, Mickey, again, not on model, an Easter card here. The German soldier sent that back to his family in Germany. Here is a, uh, this, is, this is an ace cover. Uh, a well done mini. I love the fact that both the stamp and the, um, this is a, the R Valentine is a Cinderella. And the Cinderella is tied with the stamp, with the cancel, on Valentine's Day, 1939. This was sent to Jordis Peterson in Chicago and uh, a, a very a very nice uh, rendition of, of Minnie uh, on, this, uh, on this Ace cover. Ace, Ace, Ace covers uh, were um, 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 important covers philatelically and uh, uh, many images were used, but some of them were used of, of Disney image, Disney images appear on some of them. This is a particularly good one. Here, here is Donald and Mickey used on a dental reminder in the 30s. Um, remind you that your, your, your next dental appointment is, uh, uh, is coming up. Here is a, here is a, uh, a publicity still. Here, this is, this, is, oh, this is part of all the ephemera of uh, uh, publicity still issued by Disney, just signed Walt Disney. We don't know who the artist is, but uh, uh, advertising... <coughs> Pardon? If, if, uh, um, some artists were permitted to sign for Walt. We don't know who this one was, but there were a number who uh, Walt permitted him permitted them to sign his name 
uh, on, on items, and this is one. That is not a real Walt Disney signature. But here it's advertising the Red Cross during, uh, during, the, uh, during the war. And you see Donald down there with Goofy and uh, Clarence and uh, Clarabelle Cow. Uh, Donald was, was uh, this is probably from the 1940s. And uh, Donald was just in his ascendancy. And in the 40s became even more important than Mickey. But here he's still in the background. Mickey and Minnie are the ones up front with the signups. This is one of my favorite. Uh, I've got this at a stamp show in the Northeast years ago. And when I when I saw this, I just had to have it. This is a of a, a football football uh, ticket uh, for UCLA versus USC. Evidently, um, SC was given permission to use Mickey on their as their logo during the early forties. And look at look at the date of the game, December sixth, nineteen forty one, the day before Pearl Harbor. Um, the next morning, Japanese planes were flying over Hawaii, bombing the ships, and the, U the U.S. had entered war. It was entering, going to enter World War II, but that's a particularly unique item. I've never seen another one of these. Here is another a, a, a pre-war time. The USS Reuben James, the uh, the postmaster on board the ship, was allowed to use just in 1935 this little woodcut of Mickey that he used on. Uh, on apparently on many of many of the covers in just in 1935, uh, right on board the USS Reuben James. Interestingly, Reuben James was the first ship sunk, US ship sunk during World War II. So this was just prior to uh, to its sinking, but this is celebrating the uh, the ship's 15th birthday in 1935. Here, this is again a partial image, but this is a um, and Mickey Mouse magazine was was be, begun to be published in 1935. This was a folder enclosing the second issue for uh, distributors and to show them uh, what the magazine looked like. The first one had already come out. The second one was enclosed in this uh, in this folder, encouraging them to place their orders for issue number two. I've never seen another one of these. This, these uh, were obviously, but so much of this ephemera was just thrown away and discarded, even back in the 30s. Here is a, uh, um, um, a, a um, well, a subscription form to renew, a renewal form to renew um, uh, the subscription to the Mickey Mouse magazine in 1937. I'm just sorry that the stamp is removed, but I, I've, uh, not seen another one, the envelope a little bit disfigured, but I've, I'm always looking for a better example of this. That card is quite rare and to have it with the envelope, any envelope is really is really quite scarce. So I'm pleased to at least have this. Here is a, uh, an, another, another renewal form. This is the exterior, Mickey shown outside the, uh, the buildings of New York. And that this next one is only partial. Uh, the rest is not, but you can see you could, you could get a whole a year of Mickey magazines for 75 cents uh, if, you, uh, um, if, uh, if you were suggested by uh, you know, a person with, with this renewal form, you could suggest friends that should get the, uh, the magazine. Here is a, here is a letter um, from, from Mickey uh, indicating to um, uh, Anna Simmons that, uh, that she was the winner, I think, of a Mickey watch. So again, these are, these are tough to find, with, with, especially with the envelopes and the enclosures. I was pleased to find that years ago. Uh, the, the initial, uh, one of the initial um, distributors for Disney films was United Artists, beginning in 1932. And this is a, uh, um, a envelope from the from United Artists from India to New York City. And notice little Mickey in the lower right uh, with the United Artists and Columbia Pictures logos in the cachet position as well. This was a very early, early cover uh, with the, uh, the, the early distributors uh, uh, corner card. Here is the earliest Mickey Mouse meter, a partial one, uh, 1931 in Germany, the image of Mickey Mouse in German, they spell Mickey Mouse M-A-U-S. And W. Hagelberg, Hagelberg in the lower right was an early producer of, uh, 
of Disney and Mickey postcards on for the on the continent. So they evidently had the uh, uh, the license to use these meters in, uh, in in sending out mail showing Mickey. And here is another later German uh, uh, meter, Mickey Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse, the, the magazine, 1958. So these were used for uh, and different different iterations of that uh, meter were used for many years. Here's another one from Minnesota Mining Manufacturing. This is a later one, 1956. Mickey, the advertising Mickey Mouse Club, um, and uh, from 3M to a uh, division of Tribophysics in Australia. I thought that was that was an interesting international usage of that meter. And here is the earliest U.S. Mickey meter from 1935 from Mickey's seventh birthday. Again, the United Artists Corporation. Uh, in the corner card. Uh, this is an actually uh, actually a mailed cover. These are very, very tough to find. This is the only one I have ever seen in the, with the whole envelope. I have one other but a smaller envelope that came at the same time. But uh, the, uh, uh, that, that, was, uh, that was the earliest. The, uh, the other one was the earliest German meter, 1931. This is the early US, earliest US meter, 1935. And there's another, there's a publicity still from Disney uh, celebrating Mickey's seventh birthday uh, in 1935. He was born in quotes, 1928. So 1935 is his uh, seventh birthday. Here is, an, uh, here is a, um, for Mickey's eighth birthday in 1936. I uh, have never seen another one of these. This is, this is Mickey's eighth birthday. I remember going, I think I got this at March party one year. And I went to a dealer, I, I asked every time, do you have anything Disney? And he said, yes. And when he showed me this cover, I couldn't believe it. I never knew, he, I never knew uh, the, the eighth birthday meter existed. Only one I've ever seen, again, the United Artists in the Corner Card, sent to Day Don Craig, Washington News. This is obviously a publicity uh, piece from United Artists to, uh, to the Washington News in 1936. Here is Mickey, Mickey's... Um, uh, seventh birthday, uh, no, sorry, eighth, uh, eighth, uh, eighth birthday in 1936. He, Mickey was so, this is the cover of Mickey Mouse magazine that, uh, that uh, October, um, showing the world shaking hands with Mickey. Mickey was a worldwide phenomenon by that point all over the globe. And Mickey's still today, one of the most recognizable names in the world. Here's another meter uh, for um, the, the two, um, uh, World's Fairs in New York and San Francisco uh, advertising the free showing of Mickey's surprise party. National Biscuit Company uh, corner card. And here, here is a, uh, this is from a cheese box, a French cheese box. Again, a piece of ephemera. Mickey cheese, you know, kind of, kind of goes along with it. Mice love cheese. Mickey cheese, probably from the 30s. Again, Mickey advertising hats for the Charles Tobias Company, 1934. Mickey advertising cookies. This is a store sign that would have been put up in the window of a grocery store. Here, this is an interesting cover from 1939, hand-drawn. Mickey is not actually on model, but this is hand-drawn. It's a cachet. Um, Mickey sending a letter uh, to... Uh, to the Pyre Pyrenees Orientalis, which is the southernmost part of Spain. And this, and, and this is a French stamp. If you see the F in the stamp in the lower right, that is called a franchise stamp. The only franchise stamp that, that was ever issued by France. And this was, um, this was used by uh, refugees from the uh, Spanish Civil War that made their way over across the border into Pyrenees Orientalis which was southern, uh, southern France. So this is, uh, I, I, I'd love to know a little bit more about the history of that letter or that envelope, but very nicely done, obviously, with the drawing of the cover and then the stamp and everything neatly canceled and the, really the great figure of Mickey. This is the earliest Mickey Cinderella, uh, published by uh, Stock Stockholm Magazine, Dogblad in 1831. Again, Musa Pig means Mickey Mouse in, in the Swedish. And uh, these were uh, uh, published by the newspaper to publicize the Mickey Mouse Club that, uh, that that newspaper had formed that year, 1931. 
here is a 1931 po uh, postcard with showing two examples of the uh, the Cinderella canceled with the uh, with the with the Swedish postage stamp. And I've had somebody who knows Swedish read this that this is one Mickey fan to another saying, "Send me off a Mickey letter as soon as you can." So, <laughs> and you see it's signed MP down to the lower corner. That's probably from Musa Pig, Mickey Mouse. So to find these uh, Cinderella Mickeys used on cover and really tied to the to the which of the card or cover is is, uh, is very scarce. Here's another partial image of an early Spanish fan used for advertising Mickey on a bicycle here that uh, for some reason has got cut off by the computer. Here's a hand-drawn uh, Mickey by Larry Clemens down there in the lower right-hand corner. He was an actual uh, Disney cartoonist advertising the, uh, uh, the, the journal um, in, uh, I think it's in, in Michigan, the world, the Sturgis Daily Journal. That's a hand-drawn piece, not a bad, not a bad Mickey. Here's Mickey again, uh, here's a bad Mickey, drawn not on model, advertising French or Spanish apricots. Here is a, uh, a piece of, uh, uh, again, we're, we're missing the Mickey down below there, the character. This is from the uh, Disney studio in Milan, sent to Obi Johnston, again, one of Disney's nine old men, his original group of animators, back in, in, the, in the book, he was, they were still, it was the 1940s. But that, that sorry that that Mickey doesn't show in there. There's another Mickey, here's a Spanish cover with Mickey in the lower left. And on the back of the cover is this anniversary label for Mickey's 20th anniversary, 1928 to 1948. This is a 1948 cover and a Disney affiliate in uh, uh, Spain sending a letter back to Ollie Johnson in Burbank, California. Here's an early vintage photograph of, uh, uh, of Walt and his team around the piano uh, singing Minnie's yoo -Hoo, which was the which was the first uh, the first song written about Mickey. Carl Stalling, Carl's music, or, uh, Walt's music man, is at the piano, and Walt is the second from the left, and his other group of animators are gathered around. That's early. That's early, probably 1929, 1930. That photograph was taken. This is uh, an example of the, you know, the earliest studio Christmas card in 1930. What the Walt Disney Company has been sending out uh, uh, Christmas cards to its friends and associates ever since 1930. Uh, this is the first one. There are only four of these known. This is probably the best condition of, uh, of all four. And uh, uh, the, the uh, Artwork was done by Floyd Godfordson, who was one of the early, he was the earliest artist on Mickey uh, and did the Mickey strip in the newspapers for 45 years, 1930 to 1975. Floyd did, did those comic strips, all those different stories uh, that, that he created for Mickey, much like Carl Barks did for the D Disney Ducks. Uh, Floyd was, was identified with, uh, Floyd Godfordson with Mickey, and Carl Barks was identified uh, with the Disney Ducks, Donald, Scrooge, and all. Carl in the comic books, uh, Floyd in the newspapers. But, but they think, we think Floyd did this earliest artwork on the earliest studio Christmas card. Season's greetings from Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney. Here's an, the earliest uh, studio fan card. It was sent out in 1931. It was... Uh, um, publicized in the newspapers in Floyd Godfordson's strip. Kids could write in requesting a card uh, and Walt got mountains of mail, mountains of mail. Uh, and uh, with, with so many of these sent out, it's surprising that more of them don't exist, but this is a fairly rare card. This one was, was used as a postcard on, on the, uh, the back and sent to somebody. Here is an early uh, Disney, another early Disney Studio fan card. This is particularly of note because this is actually signed by Walt Disney himself and addressed to or to dedicated to Pat Dillon, whoever Pat Dillon was. But Walt has written that to Pat. This is this is probably 1931, so Walt was doing all of his own signing back in those years. And uh, interestingly, uh, the the uh, uh, the experts on Disney's signature 
call this the four stroke W and the two stroke Y in Walt's signature. Years later, when Walt had to sign more often at Disneyland, when he was requested to sign, he would do it in a cursive way. Here, Walt is still printing, and it just takes him a lot longer to write this with four strokes of the W and two strokes of the Y. Uh, he, he later uh, drew more cursively as, as he was uh, uh, asked to sign more often, but this is a very early example of Walt's signature on a Mickey Mouse item, so that uh, not many of those exist. Here's, here is a uh, registered cover during the Dizzy strike in 1941, sent to a Fred Kopitz asking if he would like to be considered for reemployment after the strike ended. Solo use of the 21 cent uh, Chester Arthur stamp, that's not a particularly rare cover. Now, if that had a 22 cent stamp on it, a uh, Grover Cleveland, that would be probably a $3,500 to $5,000 cover. Because to, to, for the right postage, if you for 22 cents single usage, and for any, I don't know if any of you collect Prexies, oh, those single, those solo use Prexy covers are, are important philatelically. Although I didn't buy this cover for that reason. I got it for the corner card and because it was one of the strike covers. Here is an early French uh, um, folder advertising the, the fact that now in 1937, Disney was going from the United Artists distributor to RKO Films, and RKO became Walt's uh, uh, distributor for the films for many years after 1937. And here is a uh, one of my favorite covers, RKO Radio Pictures of China with a little Mickey, 1939. And here, uh, Fred Astaire in the lower left is also has a label, registered cover to the Hollywood Reporter in California. Um, just an interesting, interesting cover from China in the early years. And RK Radio Pictures obviously had a, a, uh, an office in, in China on Suchow Road in Shanghai. Here is, uh, again, a, a favorite cover from Kay Kamen. Remember I was mentioning that Kay Kamen was the early licensor that, uh, that got Mickey's image on all sorts of things in the 30s. This is a cover of 1940s. Kay was still uh, doing the work for, for Walt. Uh, this is just prior to uh, Kay Kamen's death in the flight of a cra crash of a, uh, I think an Air France jet over the Azores in 1947, later in 47. This was one of the last covers that uh, probably bore his image along with, with his words, his name along with Mickey. And here is volume one of, uh, of my Mickey book, just that uh, producing the first part of the exhibit, just to give you an idea what some of the pages, you saw some of these things in the, uh, um, in, in the presentation, but uh, what, what some of these things, uh, what the pages look like. And they're the postcard of then it's, it won the most popular champion of champions award in 2016. Um, at the, one of the stamp shows. So that just gives you an idea of that. So I do have some, some books that are available if you would ever, whether a great idea for gifts, if you know of anybody who is a Disney fan and likes Mickey, it's always kind of a good thing. So that's my presentation. Do you have any questions? Ed, is there a volume two? There is a volume two. And uh, I've got a volume three that we're trying to get printed. All of a sudden, there's a problem with Amazon. Uh, not one where I'm going to try to explore this on Friday with my formatter who puts the books together for me. We're going to call Amazon or KDP, the publishing arm of Amazon, see if we can clear it up. Uh, but yes, I, the volume twos are out. And I do have, I do have that available. So you let me know and I can send it to you. Okay. If you, if you, those, those, this, the, the volume one was 20 bucks. We were able to keep volume two at 20 bucks as well. Volume three is about 123 pages. We have to be a little bit more, uh, but I haven't, we don't have any of those yet. So if you, if you'd like that, that, that would be, you can let me know. And with a little shipping, we, we can, I, I sign the books for you, dedicate them if you want me to, and, uh, and we get them to you if you, if you want. How much is or the you shipping? can wait till I've got, I'm going to have, I try to have, I will have some with me at the show in August. So you may want to wait if you're going to be at the show in August, Carol, I'll have some there. Or Marianne, I'm, I don't know who is, to, who is asking me the question. Carol. Any other questions? 
And I have a I, cover here if you want to take a look at it. I just wonder if you have any comment on it. Can you see okay. it? Okay. Um, now, let me, remember, shall I, I put it escape? Shall I do that, uh, Eric? Yes. And then, uh, All right. and then go up where it says stop sharing your screen. All right. I'll click on that. Stop you sharing. Sharing. All right. Stop share. Oh, stop share. Okay. Here yeah. it is. All right. Okay. There we go. There we go. Oh, all right, Carol. That is that a postcard or a cover? The cover. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, canceled with the, with the Disney stamp here in 1968. I also have an exhibit of that of the Disney stamp too that I do. I and, know you uh, do. But, yeah, that's very nice as well. Very nice. I'll send you a scan of it. Oh, I would like that. I would like that. Very very nice. So my, my purpose in sharing this with all of you is trying to tweak your interest in a topic of your choice that you might like to, you know, I explore stamp shows, I explore um, flea markets, uh, postcard shows, uh, anything where it, even going in shops with a lot of old stuff, if the old paper, you can find some interesting things sometimes. So just from any topic that might you might have an interest in. So that was part of my reason to do it. It's just because I mean, you may not do the Disney thing, but you might like to do it another, uh, another, on another topic or theme. Any other questions? Well, it was great to be with you. I hope you got a little bit of information. Could you put the uh, the slide back on the screen that listed the uh, the categories associated with the display division? Sure. Let me here. Let me go and we'll share the screen again. Did you want the knowledges or what did yes, you want? The knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's see here. Here we go. Screen share. We'll start the slideshow again. There are the knowledges. Okay. Yes, that's the one. Okay. And this is what Ed Andrews said you need to have for a good display exhibit. For a good display exhibit, he that was what he mentioned to me years ago. Um, and in in your write up of a given a given item for the judges. You, you need you need to display these I, I, I on the Del Teological, which of course is postcards. I uh, uh, I was very surprised when a friend of mine said, or maybe one of the judges told me, uh, the number of postcards in the set, if you know it, and the finish. You know, it, it's a deck, it's a deckled edge, it's a rough finish, it's a smooth finish. Um, I thought hmm, that's interesting. Sorry, I misspelled knowledge under Delteological. I left out the W there. Sorry about that. <laughs> Was he implying you should have some postcards in a display exhibit? Yeah, that that's a very if you can if you can find them. Uh, you know, I, I like to find those World War II cards, um, especially uh, with the with the Disney theme. They're very tough to find, um, and and sent by both sides but Joe, postcards are very welcome in a display exhibit yep so i i have a question just about your layout and i'm sorry i may have okay missed, uh earlier on your presentation but just help me understand for for a display class like this when you're laying out pages or laying out frames is there a proportion that you keep in mind as far as the, these different elements are you um wanting to have a certain amount of ephemera versus items that have stamps on them. Right. I, I think generally they'd like to, even with the display category, they, the judges would like to see about 50% being philatelic. I, that, that's, that, that's, there, there's fluctuation on that. Um, but I think the, the lion's share, I think of the, of the present the material percentage should be philatelic, you know, 40 between 40 and 50 percent if you can i i like the fact that you can use other things that tend to be larger and more colorful that kind of adds interest to the exhibit but uh, you, you know I, I had one friend of mine who was a former philatelic judge say 
you know, when like I use these panels, 23 and a half by 17 and a half inches. And he says, really, you should probably lead with the philatelic uh, item in the top of the panels if you can. <laughs> okay. And that, and that's, that's, a, that's good counsel, you know, because you, you like the judges with the first thing they see when they look at a panel, you'd like them to like it to be philatelic. And now you can't do that in every panel, um, or I can't, but you try to do it on most. Ed, can you go back over the three stages of Mickey, every man, and then... Okay, let's see. I think Actual we icon. Yes. Mickey What's is every man. What's the difference? Mickey, well, it, as every man, I was saying that and before the licensing got going, um, artists from all over the world would draw Mickey as they, as they saw him on the screen. Every artist was different. Okay. And then they would have Mickey doing things like drinking, smoking, womanizing. One example that I have in the exhibit, I didn't show it here, uh, was or Mickey and Minnie sitting on a bench and there's a cow behind them. And Minnie is kind of going, he, 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 he has her hand up to her mouth, he, he, he. And Mickey has his hand on her breast. And the, and the uh, um, captions said, you know what I like and I know what you like. Well, you know, <laughs> Now that's tame by today's standards, but that was that was a little bit uh, risque back uh, back then, and Disney would never have allowed that, you know, after the licensing got going and really strongly in 1932. So 1930, 31, it was really the Wild West. People could do what they wanted, but then 1932 and after, when Kay Kamen came on, oh, Mickey had to look. Like if he, you're going to get if you're going to get a license, you have to have Mickey look the way he looks according to what the studio says, and doing things of which the studio, and that meant Walt would approve of. And then cultural icon uh, was uh, when when after Kay Kamen got uh, well, I think Mickey would have like, watches, he trains, and all sorts of clothing, spoons, you know, flatware, all this. You know, the, much of that was was. Uh, was just culturally important, and there was nothing really uh, scatological or uh, or risque about that. Um, when Mickey was advertising a product, he became he was Mickey was everywhere. Cult, he was a cultural icon, and then he eventually became you know the studio or corporate symbol because he was just so popular worldwide. Well, you know, and Mickey is still the symbol of uh, the Walt Disney Company today and just celebrated his 90th birthday. I'm hoping that I make his 100th in 2028. <laughs> Disney should do some some pretty uh, pretty neat things for Mickey's centennial, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, any other screen you'd like to see or any of the questions? And you said you are planning to go to Chicago? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. I'm, I've got, I hope to have my Uncle Scrooge exhibit there. Um, and then the Donald will be in the running for the most popular champion of champions. So I'm hoping to, the, I, my, 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 my Disney first day cover exhibit has uh, a one champion of champions. Mickey has, so I'm I'm hoping that Donald will. We'll see. <laughs> I always think to me that's more important than the grand award philatelically. I, I like people to be engaged with it, you know, than and the general public. Uh, that's more fun for me. 